I'm super excited to share my most recent project. My husband and I have been working on making over our bedroom. This project included a lot of DIYs as well as some bargain shopping, and I'm gonna be sharing some tips and tricks that I used to save a lot of money on this project. I am thrilled with the end result. Thank you guys so much for joining me here. I hope you enjoy. Here's our bedroom before. There were a lot of things that I did like. However, when I was putting this room together, we were on a really tight budget. So this just was not an intentional space. I just worked with what we had on hand or what I found at thrift stores. I specifically did a lot of shopping at the Goodwill outlet or the Goodwill bins where you pay for items by the pound. I even found this wallpaper in the bins. Initially we had our bed on that wall, but later we ended up rearranging the room and then it felt odd that that side wall was wallpapered. All of the furniture in this room was purchased secondhand, some as long as 12 years ago. We even purchased our doors at Habitat for Humanity, but we were short a few doors, so we never got around to replacing the door on our bathroom. And this chair was wonderful for a season when I had little babies, but our kids are just past that stage and now it's just taking up space in that room. So after eight years in this room, I was ready to lighten and brighten the space and bring in some warm, cozy, earthy tones. Whenever I'm redoing a space, if I know that I'm not going to be using the furniture or the decor or even the lighting fixtures, I sell them. I then apply that money toward items for the space. And this is why I need a drop cloth. I selected two colors for this space. This first color is actually the same color that I have throughout the main part of our home, and that's Benjamin Moore Revere Pewter. However, when I tested it in our room, it was feeling a little bit too dark in there, so I decided to have them lighten it by 50%. If there's a color that you love, but it's just feeling a little too dark, remember that you can ask them to lighten it by a percentage. In order to make this job easier, I wanted an extension, so I removed the end of a kitchen broom. It wasn't fitting tight, so here I wrapped paper towel around the end. It then fit great. And the other color we chose was conifer green.
fan of hanging curtains high and wide on windows to make them appear larger. However, because I was doing a feature wall, I felt like having curtains on that wall would visually cut the wall in half. So it wasn't the best option for this space. In order to upscale the look of these windows a little bit, I wanted to give them a wrapped look. However, I didn't want to spend the money to actually wrap them. The way I achieve this look on a budget is by painting the interior casing, or in this case, drywall around the window to match the trim. I then do the same with the outer edge. And then I'll show you a little bit later how I wrap up this look. For the wall behind the bed, we're going to be creating somewhat of a slat wall. However, when we went to go purchase it, we would have to order it and it was going to take quite a while to get here. So we decided to go with plan B and buy some plywood. And my husband has a track saw, so that made this job a lot easier. You could potentially do this with a table saw, but it would be a lot more work. Once he had those strips cut, I grabbed a few of them, cut them to length and attached them to the wall to complete this faux wrapped window look. And this was kind of multifunctional. It not only elevated the look of the windows, it also gave me a nice clean line so that when we installed our slat wall, it could meet right up to that line. Previously, we had cellular blinds here and those were totally fine. However, I felt like they might compete with the lines in the accent wall. So I thought these Roman shades would be a nice soft option that would complement the wall as opposed to compete with it. Because we had crown molding in this room, if we just went right to installing those slats, at the top it would look kind of messy. So I first started by running one strip across the top so it would look nice and clean. For the first slat, I spent a lot of time making sure that I got it nice and level. And once we had settled on spacing, we cut a piece of wood that we used as a spacer. To avoid potentially damaging any electrical or plumbing that may be behind your wall, I advise using nails that are only the depth of your slat plus the thickness of your drywall. I found these dressers on Facebook Marketplace and I loved the nice clean lines on them, but they did have some wear and a little damage, so they needed a little love. We also picked up these nightstands. I love the raw wood look. However, I knew that I needed to protect these pieces. I also knew that as soon as I put a top coat on it, it was going to turn it kind of an orangey color and that really wasn't what I wanted. So here I'm using this rugged tan and some of that Revere pewter and really watering it down and washing it onto the pieces. I love this technique because the wood just kind of drinks up that wash. It does a great job of eliminating those orange tones, but you can still see some of the variations in the wood and that wood grain, and it doesn't look like a painted piece.
on this high boy dresser, I didn't love how on that third drawer there were three small knobs. I decided to take some walnut wood filler and mix in a little bit of that wash so it would match. I let that dry, sanded it down, and then repeated the process. I looked for hardware that would work with the existing holes, but these are older dressers and the spacing was a little odd. So I decided to find a knob that would cover those holes and we just drilled new ones. I am known as being a bargain shopper and I certainly am that, but I also am a believer in investing in some quality, more luxurious pieces. This leads me to today's sponsor. Brooklinen was so kind to send me one of their best selling bundles, their Lux Sateen Move-In Bundle. This is gonna be such a great addition to my room and really help give it that more luxurious feel. So let's open it and see what we got. First up, we have this Mulberry Silk Sleep Mask. This is so pretty. Next, we have two pillow cases. One thing I love about Brooklinen is with each wash, these sheets get softer and softer. Next, we have a duvet cover. It may be no surprise to you guys, I opted for white, but they have over 20 options for colors and patterns. So no matter what your style is, they likely have something that would work for you. And here I have the core sheet set, which includes a flat sheet, a fitted sheet, and two pillowcases. So with this bundle you get an additional two pillowcases. Here I selected an all season down alternative comforter. They have all sorts of different options to fit your needs. And last but not least, two pillows. You can really easily save by purchasing their bundles. Brooklinen has been so kind to give you guys a special offer of $20 off any order over $100. In order to redeem that, just click that link in the description box and use the code Tiffany Gemmer. When I was designing the room, I knew I wanted to put an antique looking bench at the foot of the bed. My initial plan was to build one and try to recreate the look. However, I came across this bench on Facebook Marketplace and I was able to snag this for not much more than it would have cost me to purchase materials to build it. The one thing I didn't love about it was that varnish on there, so I decided to remove it.
as you can see, there were a couple different types of wood here. So I decided to start by applying a wash. Once again, I am using that Revere Pewter. I then topped it with this brown finishing wax. I've been eyeing some decorative trees, but I found that the nice high quality looking ones are really expensive. So when I found this at the thrift store for $7.99, I decided to see what I could do with it. I went down to Hobby Lobby and initially I was planning to grab some olive branches to create an olive tree look. But when I got to Hobby Lobby, I was more drawn to these branches. If you're just now starting to collect tools or if you don't already have something like this, I highly recommend these combination pliers. I use these so much. They're super helpful to have on hand. So if you want to go check these out, I'll have them linked down in that description box. I used the cutters on this to score around that outer layer. I then pulled it off to expose the wire.
I purchased this chandelier off of Amazon. It was the size and shape that I wanted. However, that brass was pulling a little more orange than I wanted. I really wanted a soft brushed brass look. So I ended up going down to the hardware store and I found this spray paint. <laughs> hindsight I think I could have saved some money by just buying something used and spray painting it with this. My next big find literally was this framed out canvas. It really wasn't the aesthetic that I was going for but I loved the size so I decided to see what I could do with it. After two coats of primer and lightly sanding, I started by pulling up some inspiration photos. I am absolutely not an artist and full transparency, I was a little intimidated by this project, but I decided to just go into it with the mindset that if I didn't like how it turned out, I would just paint over it and keep going. And if this was a total fail, I could just course correct and figure something out. Here I'm using some joint compound and spreading some of that onto this canvas to help add some texture. I used really thin layers to help avoid cracking. I certainly do not know what I'm doing here. I'm just experimenting and playing around until I feel like it's done.
In our past two homes, we've had this issue with our carpet. In doing research, it sounds as though this can happen if they don't power stretch your carpet when they install it. Re-stretching your carpets is something you can hire out. However, we found this tool and my husband was up for the job. So if that's something that you want to tackle, I'll have that link down in the description for you. Moving forward, we will be sure to use installers who power stretch the carpet. So I just wanted to share this with you guys in case you have this issue as well. As I was saying, I am a thrifter at heart, but sometimes I feel like it's worth it to invest in a few key pieces. And this rug was one of those for me. I love that it's washable and it really pulled the whole design together. When it comes to hanging wall art, what I like to do is figure out the placement, find one of the hanging points and mark it. Here, I just held my finger there. I went ahead and put a nail in. I then took painter's tape and ran it from one loop over to the other. That let me know exactly how far apart my nails need to be. I then put that tape on the wall and made sure that it was nice and level. Of course, keep in mind that if you have a heavier piece, you'll want to find a stud or use drywall anchors. The finish on these wasn't quite going to fit in with this space. To protect the brass on this, I wrapped that in painter's tape. This larger basket is one that I picked up at the Goodwill outlet. If you haven't been and you're not familiar with the Goodwill outlet, they charge by the pound. This basket was pretty lightweight, so I think I paid approximately a dollar for it. I then hot glued the branches in place.
I then topped that with this Spanish moss that I again picked up from the Goodwill outlet. This mirror is one that we had in our room previously and I had distressed it. Here I'm just undoing that distressing. I love the warmth that candles bring to a space. However, with pets and little ones, I often opt for battery operated and we typically use rechargeable batteries. However, I get kind of tired of continually swapping them out and recharging them. But I recently came across this plug-in option and I am super excited about it. And I'll have this linked for you guys. As you can see here, we have attic access in the corner of our room. It's not the most attractive thing. So what I decided to do was go online and search for mirrored closet doors. And people are giving these away for free all the time. And you can get a really nice large mirror for nothing. This is certainly not a proper repair for this. This is just a little band-aid on this. This is fresh out of the dryer and it did come out somewhat wrinkled. So here I'm just lightly misting it with water and then pulling it taut to help relax those wrinkles. We've had this set for a few weeks now and we are loving it. It is so cozy and it definitely adds an element of luxury to the room.
This right here was actually inspiration for this whole room. I picked this up out of the Goodwill outlet bins a while back and I loved the color on it. This space finally feels intentional. I love that it not only feels light and airy, but also warm and cozy. Factoring in the selling price of approximately $1,500 from items that we previously had in our room, this truly was a budget-friendly makeover. I'll have all items that I'm able to link down in that description box for you. Don't forget to go check out Brooklyn and for luxury bedding and home goods. If you enjoyed this video, would you please do me a big favor and hit that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss future videos. I hope you were able to pick up some helpful tips and tricks along the way. Thank you so much for joining me here. I'll see you next time.